Hi, this is David Rainishek with Juice Feasting. Coaching insights. This morning I was speaking with a client. And she was asking me, what about after the juice feast? How am I going to maintain my health, my weight, my focus after the juice feast? And I shared with her a story from my growing up in high school with a youth pastor named Paul Nazarian. Paul was probably about my age, had little kids, two of them under 10, and he drove an old Toyota van everywhere. We had like 150 people in the youth group at my church. Paul was very busy between that, taking care of kids and his own kids, and Paul never had time to clean out his blue Toyota van. So one day, Paul has the time and the resources to be able to take his van over to Bubbles Car Wash in Houston, Texas, and he gave him probably a couple hundred bucks, and he said, here, clean it, you know, stem to stern. And so they did. And Paul got that car back at the end of the day, and he was so excited, he took it home to his kids. And he's like, kids, come on, let's go out and take a ride in the van. Look how clean it is. And everybody jumps in, and they go around driving, and he takes them out for ice cream. And he's got his kids in the car with their ice creams and they're eating it in the back seat. And one of them drops the ice cream off the cone onto the seat. And in the process of you know all the chaos that ensued, the ice cream went all over the seat. And Paul looked back and forgetting um, about the importance of his child's state of mind and how already upset he probably was at dropping his ice cream, Paul yelled at his child a bit, what are you doing? I just had this car clean. They worked on it all day and you've got an ice cream all over the place and we can't go back. And his son started crying. Now, Paul was a great father and he was an amazing youth pastor. But just in that moment, he was just he cherished that clean car so much and it got, it got ice cream like all over the seat. And in that moment, his son started crying and he realized just in an instant, oh my gosh, actually what's most important in this moment is not that the seat is clean, but how my child is feeling. And so Paul quickly rectified the situation and went around and got ice cream and, and, um, and changed things. But that became a story for him about paying attention to the present moment and actually what's most important, particularly with the people that you're in relationship with. Now, that's not the take home that I actually want you to have for this story, although it's a nice one. The take home is, is that when you juice feast, it's a lot like finally, finally you get to take your Toyota in and have it cleaned. And you put a lot of resources into doing that. And so once your car is clean, how likely are you, after all that time of not cleaning it, how likely are you to wanna to let muddy kids or kids with ice cream back in your car? Probably not very likely. Now this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed that you're not gonna let muddy kids back into your car after a juice feast or kids with ice cream cones that might drop it on, on the back seat. But it makes it much more likely that you will avoid that kind of a thing and say metaphorically, hey, take your shoes off, put them in the bucket in the back, walk around in your socks, get in the car, you can't have ice cream in here or your granola bars or whatever it is that you guys uh, wanna have. You can't have it in here because I just got this car cleaned and I'd actually like it to stay this way as long as possible. I'm going to keep on doing regular maintenance on, on how clean it is and, and how well taken care of it is now. So this is an important element to doing well after the juice feast is reminding yourself of how long it took for you to get around to finally cleaning that automobile. And how nice it is that it's all clean now and how much easier it is to go ahead and keep it clean rather than allowing it to go back to the state that it was in before and having to run that whole cycle over again. Also, we found through research, strangely enough on public bathrooms, that bathrooms that are already clean and pristine, the public tends to keep those things clean. Bathrooms that are messed up, people don't tend to take care of them very well. So as your body returns to health, and you see what you've done to get it there and you appreciate how nice it is to have your health return and your vitality return, you're much more likely to go ahead and maintain it just as a human being, as a general, uh, general practice. All right, that's it for uh, this coaching insight for the day. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you again soon.